Welcome. This is a small demonstration on how to generate metrics from Splunk and send them to SignalFX. And then from Splunk, query the same metrics stored in SignalFX. We will also look at um, detecting um, alerts from SignalFX from Splunk. First of all, you need to install the SignalFX forwarder that gives you the search command to SignalFX. And you also need to have Splunk infrastructure monitoring add-on that gives you the search command sim to query SignalFX. I have a local installation here where I have the two apps installed already. The SignalFX forwarder is very easy. You just give uh, get your access token from Splunk uh, from SignalFX. You check also the ingest URL, um, so you're able to send from SignalFX, uh, sorry, from Splunk to SignalFX. And the same thing with uh, Splunk infrastructure monitoring add-on. You use a token and a realm to query the data. And you can actually have more than one realm, uh, more than one SignalFX instance. Uh, in Splunk so you can query them both. So we will start with generating some fake data and we will use the make result uh, command and we are going to use a few events so this gives you just basically some sample data. I will then just add um, a number to each row by using the stream stats command. And I will count them and I will label that as a new field called integer. Each line will have one row. And to generate a matrix, uh, you need to have uh, either a metric name that is of type uh, gauge, uh, accumulate, and so on. And so I will just use the gauge type. So I will use the eval, and I will use a metric name called foobar for demonstration purposes. So this gives me random number between 1 and 10 as a new field. They all have the same timestamp. So let's skew the timestamp a little bit by doing eval of underscore time, where time is time minus our integer. So I will shift all the position a second. So this gives you um, one hour of random data. I can also now add a few dimensions to my metric name because foobar is my metric name and I would like to add a dimension to this where I say eval host is my little host so I have my metric called foobar I have my dimension called my little host and I have an integer and a time so what I do now is just remove I specify that it's going to be underscore time it's going to be gauge foobar and uh, host. These are the data I would like to send to SignalFX. So let's do that. So we use the to SignalFX command. What happens now is I push it over to SignalFX and I get the status code of 200, hopefully, if I configured it correct. So let's go over to SignalFX and look at 
do I have my metric name called foobar so I will search it and I found it here so you can see it's a type of gauge as well I could and if I just add it there you get the signal there and I would like to add a filter on my dimension where I say my little host so here you can see the same random data in SignalFX what I do now is looking at the signal flow over here that is the SignalFX search language and I can steal this data part here copy it and go back to uh, my Splunky installation to query it so I used uh, pipe character because this is generating command flow query equals and I need to have the double quotes and I will get hopefully my data back so here I can see the value of that metric I can see the metric name called foobar and I see the dimension my little host the value is here as underscore value so if I would like to plot this I can then say time shot average as value and I can use the last 60 minutes go into the visualization and line shot and connect them so now I have my data back into Splunk again even though it's stored in SignalFX so that was using the signal flow part so if I go back to my SignalFX installation and I would like to say that from this graph here I would like to create a detector so I create a new detector from chart and I will label it my initials detector and I go into alert rule and proceed to alert connection I'm going to use a static threshold and since this a random data between 1 and 10 I can say anytime when it's above 9 I would like to have this detector to trigger so I can see that for the data I have right now for the last hour it will trigger a few times so I can verify if I get an overload and a, an alert fatigue or not so I will then continue I will set this to just to info level and nothing else and activate it so this is my my small detector so I'll copy that as well and activate it and just to make sure that I have some sample data I can query this run this query again send in more uh, random data as much as I want and I should be able to see actually in my alert detectors I search for my detector and it have not detected any new random data that is more than 10 so let's see if we can trigger it in the meanwhile I go back to my Splunk installation I can then use the sim command and this time I will look for the event and the query type of event type and say my initials and I think I might have any old data here let's query it yes and we got it so here is the data I can see that it was creating an alert it was my rule name and you have the signal effects event type and here it contains the rule name that I was giving and as you can see current signal is above 9 
and it should be also on an info level. So this is a way where you can then query both data that is stored in SignalFX and query if you have any detectors that have been triggered. So I hope that gives you some ideas how SignalFX and Splunk can interact in between each other. All right, thank you.